Hey everybody, happy Sunday to you. I hope you're having a nice day today. It's a little bit cold here in Ohio for some reason. Yesterday or the day before, I guess it was, it was pretty good. But um, today is not so good. But hey, what do we care? We're not outside, right? We're in here doing this, so that's all good. Also, everything's good. Okay, today I want to talk a little bit about kitchen sink necklaces because next week at this time, that's what we'll be doing in Columbia and Ohio at the workshop. So next weekend, we won't have our regular Sunday thing that we have our meeting on Sunday together that we get. We're going to try to get in here on Sunday live. But 4.30 will be a little bit too late because that's about when we'll be wrapping up for the day. So, and we have a party that night. So that's the last thing we do at the workshop is we have a party. So anyway, <clears throat> we are not going to have the regular one. And I'll remind you to, I'll put a notice in the community section under my name. And also remind you at Facebook too. So you don't come and be real disappointed. We will have some short, very brief um, videos in here. They'll probably be live and they'll probably be just full of raucous laughter and all kinds of noise. And you won't even be able to hear me because, hey, when we get together, we have fun and we're loud. Let's get loud. So we will be getting loud next Sunday and coming in Ohio at the workshop. So, but let's talk about today. Today, you're going to have to bear with me. I have a cold. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> There's Karen Eaton and Carol Carlson, two of my girls. We're going to be together next Sunday, aren't we? Yep, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Um, today, maybe we'll be a little bit light in who comes out to see us because it's Mother's Day. So a lot of people might be going out to eat with their family. We'll see. We'll see. There's uh, Amanda Lee and Deborah Long. She says she can't wait either. I mean, I can't either. I'm getting so excited. I've got this place is a wreck. It is unholy mess. My whole kitchen's trashed. This office, you can hardly move in it. I had my cleaning lady come yesterday to help me because I'm sorry, I need that kind of help. And she couldn't hardly do anything. So we just said, I said, oh, come on, Debbie, let's just go down and clean out the car. Because <laughs> it's like, what can we do in here? But anyway, um, so much to take over there. But I think I'm on top of it. I got all of their supply kits made. Should we show them the supply kit okay. that everybody's getting? They're, they're over there in those boxes. We'll show you what they're all getting. And this, you know, it's not like a big bee suit gift. I mean, I don't know about that. well, maybe part of it is, but um, par part of their workshop fee covers this. But anyway, to get it all on camera, this is all the stuff that they're going to need, just basic stuff <coughs> for the class. Um, in here, we've got a bag that has um, a couple sponge brushes, Mod Podge, Diamond Glaze, this is Diamond Glaze, E6000, a Perfect Pearls, uh, clear embossing ink, and then we got one of these little dealios, because I don't know if you know this, but you know, you don't have to go buy like a fancy one of these. Is those, these nail blocks, you can uh, distress with the nail blocks, and they work out really good. So I'm going to give them all one, because I had a whole bunch. And then... Here's the bag of all the brass type stuff for tissue decoupage. They're going to get the indent cuff and they're going to get the fancy plaque that goes in the front and a couple other things to experiment with. And uh, here's a little cup thing in case they need it. And then here's, um, and this one, it has their skinny cuff, their silver skinny cuff, and they get a whole thing of wire. Whole, I guess maybe see through there. I don't know. Yeah, you can. Yeah. The whole, you get a whole roll of wire. They're getting some briolettes. And why would they be getting briolettes in their package, Javi? Because I'm going to teach them. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to teach about the briolettes, Javi? How to wire wrap. How to wire wrap. Let me see if I can get this up because I tied it pretty tight. Oh. Um, and I'll just show you the briolettes that are in here. They're glass. Yay. Um, <laughs> They're in the funky Picasso type finishes. I got a little deal on some, so everybody's going to get a little string like this. That's this nice. they're all different too. They're not all this blue, but anyway, Javi's going to teach you how to wrap the tops and make a little fancy wrap on them. Yeah. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. So we got that. We got a little piece of sari ribbon in here for you, and 
She might have some. Oh, there's a little package of jump rings in her too. So, oh. oops. Any, well, I have to redo that any one. Any tissue? <laughs> any tissue? Oh yeah, there's tissue in. Where is it? Oh, it's yeah, in there. It's in there. <laughs> yeah, there's a piece of tissue for tissue decoupage. Thanks, Javi, for prompting yeah. me on that. That's kind of important. Yeah. So the first day we're going to be doing uh, tissue decoupage, and then the second day we're going to be doing wonky wire wrap bracelets, mm -hmm. and the last day we're going to be doing kitchen sinks. And we're just going to have a ball with it. So anyway, that's what they're getting in their pack. But today we're going to talk about kitchen sinks because it doesn't matter if you're coming or not. This is something that people like. They find it to be very, very entertaining and fun. And um, let's just talk about different types. I'm going to rewrap this in a minute. Make sure that I don't leave anything out of that because whoever gets this one will be sadly disappointed. It took me a whole day to make these. I made 30 of them. And I'm telling you what, how to do them in sections. It was it was a big job, but that's okay. You're worth it, anyways. Okay. <laughs> so when you think of kitchen sink necklaces, this is the kind of thing you probably usually think of, uh, like a triple, quadruple layer graduated bib necklace with stuff hanging all over it. A lot of it would be, in this case, repurposed material, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. Um, but it's all in how you lay it out. These look really great <coughs> when you just look at them, you're like, <gasps> but they're almost like, I mean, I know people buy these and they collect them. Um, she's a very famous artist for doing these, and people are in line to get her work. But for me, they're more like, uh, let's hang it on the wall and look at it type stuff. I would have this on for 10 minutes tops, because I fibromyalgia, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I have fibromyalgia bad and this would wreck my neck I'd be in a chiropractor so for me this is not a necklace that I would likely wear but do I like to look at it yes I love to look at it do I like to make it something like this yes I do enjoy making it um, would I be able to sell something like this it would take a while and I probably wouldn't get what I needed for it but I would have had a ball making it so there you go let's see who's with us now Chris <laughs> Kemp's here Jolie Kids here, man, Lee's back, my cool and likes to have a cleaning lady. <laughs> Honey, it's a necessity here, believe me. It's not a luxury, it's a necessity. I cannot do all my work. Do you know, a lot of you know this, I started out my business life first as a cleaning lady, and I was a good one. I had, um, I worked for 11 years as a cleaning lady when Jordy was real little, and I was junking around at the same time too, but I was, um, before he was born, actually, I was a cleaning lady for five or six years before he was born. And then uh, I had, I worked over that course of time for 40 different families. And most of them, most of them, <laughs> I love dearly and I think of often. And I enjoy cleaning their homes. I don't have a problem with cleaning. But I just can't do my own. So just a few months before I quit doing all my cleaning jobs, I was really picking a lot then, and I was making way more money at picking than I was at cleaning houses. And, but I didn't want to quit them all. It was really hard to separate myself from my ladies because I loved them. So I hired a cleaning lady. So I was a cleaning lady with a cleaning lady. That was kind of dumb. But anyway, that's how that went. And I, it was never because uh, it was a luxury. It was because it was a necessity for me. Anyway, here's Jacqueline, Mina. Javier, she's sitting here. I'm right. Maureen's here. Mina, Erica's here. Hey, Kimberly, Marjorie Roberts, Lynn Sweet. Boy, we got a lot. Of, we got 28 here so far today. Lori Wooten's here. Yeah, Erica says she can't wait till Thursday evening. You better believe it, baby. Erica's coming a long way to get here. She's coming clear from UK. So that's pretty amazing. Julie's here. <coughs> okay, so... Let's talk about more styles of kitchen sinkers because there's more ways to do it than the you know, triple, quadruple strand, okay? Um, here's another one that's big, long, and effusive is this one. And you know, I'm not sure, in fact, I doubt that this is all on one necklace. I think, I think this is an assortment layers of many necklaces. And you know, you can approach a kitchen sinker that way too. If you want to walk into the room with this kind of thing on, to just wow everybody, make it in layers. And then you can take a few off so you don't kill your neck. 
That's my thought. That's what I would probably want to do. Um, let's see what we got else. This one's cute. This is a double layer, and it looks like it's um, a bunch of rhinestones that have been fit together in settings. But they're not like <coughs> little tiny rhinestones. It's like small cabs and chunky chatons and stuff. So that's, that's pretty. I would definitely call this a kitchen sink. You know, kitchen sink is just another type of a bib necklace, and there's a bazillion ways to do them. And you know what? I think going forward, we'll try and explore that. I think it would be fun. Here's another kind with all the drippy chains. Now, I like this kind. This might be more me, because I like the, the element of surprise. Uh, this would be a little bit difficult to make. You'd probably have to put it on a mannequin to make it so that you could see how it would hang. I have a like a half mannequin. It's really cool. I'm probably going to bring it to the workshop. I have a half mannequin that's on a hanger. It's not a you know heavy mannequin. It's on a hanger. Like you could have it in a boutique and like put a shirt on it and hang it on the wall type thing. That thing is so invaluable to me <coughs> whenever I'm going to do something like that because I can take it wherever I am. I can put it up, you know, against something and, and work from it. And it's really nice. We have it out in the garage right now with a little setup so we can do um, jewelry photography. But it's, it's a really cool thing and it works. So if you can get your hands on something like that, it would do you well. Um, let's see. Suzanne Seabridge is here. Kelly Weimer, Melissa, and Harpo. Beverly Sprague, Jerry Tanaka, KK4, Duke, Pat Jones. Hey, how you doing, Pat? I don't always recognize the names. So let's keep going. I'll show you some more here. This one, I like this style better for me. This is, as far as I can tell, appears to be at most a double strand and the, it's just the longer things are hung on the bottom. For me you get all the impact of a longer one and a bigger one but for me as a small person now I never let being a small person hold me back from wearing big chunky jewelry. Some people say oh you should wear tiny jewelry if you're small. I don't think so. But sometimes it's just a little bit too much for me. So uh, the great big long one, I love making it, but I would wear, I'd probably wear this. But I don't know, it might be still too heavy for somebody like me. Here, this is interesting. This is, <coughs> it looks like five strands here on a rosary type chain. And all it is is watch movements. How cool is that? I love that. So what you'd do is just save up all your watch movements and then you'd want to get ones that were similar in size to use. And these all are older ones. These are not newer ones from, you know, electronic watches. Um, do I want to call them electronic? LED, what do you call them? It's just, not, these are the old-fashioned watches. These are the old ones, so this is really cool. That'd be something for a collector, you know, to make. If you collected watch memorabilia, this would be awesome. This one, I love the shape of this. This is a Kay Adams again. Um, she's got several strands here, but what she's done in the middle is she's caught it to one big focal. So, you know, you just play with it. She's got skinny strands or lighter, not, I wouldn't really call them skinny, but lighter weight. Like she's got this pearl necklace, which is probably repurposed. And she's got some other necklaces down here she's added to. And it's with a nice, it's got a really nice flow to it. It's a really nice form. It would lay really nice. Sometimes something like this is going to just jostle and jingle around all over you, which might be okay. That might drive me nuts, but that might be okay. But this one is going to lay real nice. So when you're planning yours, you might want to think about that, especially if you're going to wear it. So anyway, Erica likes them. Wow, I love that one. Deborah says she loves that one. She like Carol likes the watch movement one. I think that's so cool. That would be cool with game tokens. Yeah. You know, I made one one time. I have to look for that picture and post it on the group. Mine was a single strand, but it was definitely a sinker. And it had a lot of poker chips on it. And little old-fashioned um, plastic pendants and toy-type things. They're not really toys. 
but that's how I'm remembering. It had some funky beads. Most of it was repurposed or was new old stuff. It wasn't too much stuff from our site on it, but I love that piece and it sold really quick too. This is a really, this one I would definitely totally wear. I don't know who made this and it's apparently all repurposed work, but they've just basically taken the clasp off necklaces and shortened them where they needed to and just hung them around, you know, put them around. And these under here, this brooch, there's got to be, I don't know what the other side looks like, but for me, probably um, they found a way to either attach, you know, the jumps under there or something, some way they ingeniously invented as a clasp. I've done that different times. I've taken things and made kind of a clasp out of it to hide, but Unfortunately, I don't have any of those pictures here to show you, but that's what this appears to be, and this is beautiful to me. A bride could wear that. That's gorgeous. That's classy. Okay, this is a company called French Candy. You guys ever heard of them? They do a lot with um, religious medallions and stuff like that, and they're in Southern California, and they make really high-end upscale stuff. You guys can go look at them later. Google them. It's French and then candy, I think they spell it K-A-N-D-E. Um, they're a pretty well-known company, but very, very upscale, you know. Um, I know Mel's talked to them a couple of times, but he's got all kind of castings like that. But anyway, um, this is the way they've done it. And it appears also to be layers. So for me, that's good because you can take one or two off if they get in the way. So I, I like that option, but it's still, I would definitely call layers like this still kitchen sink style. It's like you got everything on but the kitchen sink. <coughs> Excuse me, I didn't make that up. I don't think anybody on YouTube made that up, but that's what we've been calling it for a long time. I'm going to tell you who made that up. Beansy. If you guys know Beansy from the Vintage Heart, I don't know how it was. We got to talking about it one day, and she was calling it, this is kitchen sink stuff. And I'm like, what better word, what better title for it than kitchen sink jewelry? So, yay, beans. She named it. So, anyway, Ellie Belly, you are very welcome. I'm so glad you came. Amanda Lee says, great idea for your miscellaneous lesson, perfect beads. I always used to throw broken chip beads, but my friend Diane said keep them and use them in projects. Well, maybe. Or maybe those would be good ones to do the tech, uh, the tissue decoupage thing on. I'm not one for chippy busted up beads. And I I don't know, maybe some of the pieces on here are a little bit shabby. But um, I think if you did that, your entire theme would need to be, you know, a shabby piece. Or maybe some of it mixed media and then throw some chippy things in it. Like when I say mixed media, for those who are not familiar, um, these beads we made the other week. We use the old pearls and we tissue decoupage and we have um, <coughs> the ice enamels over them and all that. This is definitely mixed media work. So putting this with chippy, uh, busted up type things or uh, chip pearl type things or chip repurposed beads would probably be a good look. I'm not big into repurpose, so I mean, as I'm showing you these pieces, I wonder how many were perfectly good pieces of jewelry that got broken up. And I know, hey, it's your jewelry. You can do what you want. And I know that is a very, very popular trend, but it makes me sad because so many people say, believe this or not, because we most of us here love vintage, but you know what? It's not that hot out there right now. It's going to come back. It's, it's on its way back. I have several reasons why I know that. But um, till it gets here, it's just like a lot of younger people say, oh, that's old. I don't want that. But if it's broken up and they can buy it in a flea market in a sack for five bucks, then it's, it's fair game. But they, there could be good things in there. And if you don't know what they are, you could be throwing money down the drain. I mean, I can't tell you what I found in those bags before. So you need to learn to identify things. So a lot of this repurposed stuff is gorgeous. And if it's broke, hey, fine, do it. You know, why, why waste it? But um, I've done my share of it. But I just kind of... You know, whatever. Everybody has to decide for themselves. You know, I do it sometimes myself. Okay, now here, this is <coughs> stuff like you find on my site, along with stuff that this person's evidently collected up. And they're using Rolo chain on a two-strand. 
And that is a very good way to do it. Rolo is perfect for this because it's easy to count off. You don't end up getting stuff twisted. That's the thing about a kitchen sinker that takes so long is getting everything to hang on there so that it's all going the right way. That's the thing that's a pain. Alrighty, this is really cool too. This is not so much as the, you know, vintage type look, but it's just, it's organic. And what she's done with hers is she's twisted her initial lengths that she hung stuff on. So this is twisted. Right in here, it's twisted. So then she, hang thing, she hung things from it being twisted. That's a case where you'd really need to have, you know, be working off a mannequin, I think. Um, this one, this is a Kay Adams, too. I love this look. I've done ones like this. <coughs> I sold them, too. Um, just take your straight chains and hook it up. Um, it looks like she's maybe one or two strands here. Or this could even be layers. It's sometimes hard to tell because you can't see the back to see if it's all caught together. But, um, yeah, this is great. This would not be hard to make either. You just need to have, you just need to line up the right stuff. To do. You know, when you do these, it's not like, oh, let's just get in a bag and see whatever old thing I've got in here and just start hanging it. You know, no. I mean, you could do that. And if it makes you, gives you joy, then go for it. But that's not the correct way to do this. The correct way to do this is to plan. She's definitely got a plan. I'm going to use this type of stuff. I'm going to use these colors. I'm going to make it drape this way. I like it that way, too. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can bet she knew her lengths and what she was going to do with them before she got started. So there is a little bit of planning involved. Now, I don't have to lift this up because I'm going to reveal something to you in a minute. But anyway. I think somebody asked a question. Did they work? It said, uh, I missed it. Where did you find pictures of them? Pinterest. Pinterest. Yeah. Take a Pinterest break. Make yourself an album. Make yourself, I, I'm a big believer in this. Make yourself a secret Pinterest album and dump everything <laughs> that Sorry. appeals to you in it. You should see mine. It's huge. But that way I don't forget. Mm -hmm. So, and if, you know, when I do this and I show it to people, I hope it has a watermark on it. Most of these do, so people... No, you know, mm -hmm. give credit where credit's due. Um, but <coughs> really good for teaching purposes. I love how this one is. This one's on just one strand, and it's that, um, it's that big circle chain, like chain that was really hot about five years ago. And she's used a lot of baubles on it. <coughs> Look like lucite and some other things. It's different. Yeah, resin pieces that look like... Um, stones. This one, you guys might have seen this one because this one's been all over Pinterest. This is really fantastic. And this one is a festoon actually. You can see how these loops come around. How, remember how we did a festoon necklace maybe a couple months ago or so? These are all looped up like this and then she's figured out where she's going to put stuff. So she had a plan in that she knew what style she wanted to do and she's all in one color family. But the rest of this is really random. So she probably worked it out as she went, but that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. I love this little play of beads right here at the shoulder. I think that's really, really cool. The way she did that, I love that. And it's got a mermaid theme. So that's, she probably sold that already several times. <coughs> Mermaids are hot. Okay, here's a way you can do one with doilies. You know, if, if you're into antiques and stuff like that, then you've probably got a collection of vintage, you know, fabric and linens and all that. Um, I don't have so much as I used to, but I used to have a lot of it because I sold it. I used to sell that in vintage clothes a lot. And I love this stuff too, so a lot of times I would keep some for myself. So I had quite a bit of it for a while. And it always amazed me how much work was done in the crocheting. And there's, this one's got tatting in it. All that work, and these things were sold for nothing. You know, you'd pick them up fleas and yard cells and stuff for nothing but this person the way this is done you get that fusible web stuff for those of you who sew and you attach them to the fusible web so it's got a nice um, soft backing and it also stabilizes the piece 
so that you can hang things on it that maybe might be too heavy to put on a crochet dually. It might pull it out of shape or snag it or tear it or whatever. With the fusible webbing on the back, it stabilizes it so you can do that kind of thing. Let's see, here's Christy Hanna. Oh, yes, I know you love Kay Adams. Yes, you do. I do too. I love her stuff. I, th I think it's a hoot, you know. I'm, I've just, you know, since. I, some have even said to me, you know, Brenda, since you started working with 1928, you know, you've just changed a lot. And I'm like, no, not really in my heart of hearts. I want to chotch things up to the max the way I used to do it and the way it's in my heart to do, the way I've always done it. But I have a different way of looking at things. And I think it's refined, my design sense, and what I'm going to tell you. Because a piece like this... You might enjoy making them, but if you do shows and your booth is full of this, you pretty much made your booth a museum for the day. Yeah. Most people, they're going to come in, ooh, and ah, your booth's going to be full of people. They're gonna be looking, nobody's going to be buying anything because most people are too timid to wear something like this. They might, they might admire it, but they're too timid to wear it. Or they just like looking at it, like I mentioned at the beginning, they never wear it. So uh, you might sell one or two in the day and go home very sad, feeling rejected as an artist, and it's not that at all. You just didn't have what your customer wanted, and that's what I've learned over the years is that. So there's a fine balance between doing what you enjoy doing if you sell your work and what's practical and what your customer will wear. So you have to balance that out. Now, if you just make it for a lark, for the joy of it, for yourself, hey, have at it. Make as many as you want. Uh, it's not not a problem for you, but if you need to sell this stuff, you need to give it a lot of thought. Okay, let's see what all we're saying. <coughs> Riding in the car watching the video. <laughs> you might get a sick tummy that way. <laughs> Ellie Bell or a lightning storm, you will look hot. Okay, I missed the beginning of that. The green eyed monster is not a fave. Okay. Um, everybody has theirs. Everybody has theirs that they don't like. For, <laughs> I like everything. I, I see coolness in everything, like this piece here. A lot of you guys like pretty things. This is not what I call pretty. This is very earthy, organic, um, boho, woodstocky type jewelry. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. Gathering the pieces for something like this would just be amazing. But I'm not real sure how well it sells. It probably would. But... I just like everything else, I'd have to keep an eye on cost, but this is very wearable. So that's the thing about that one. This one is very typical K Adams. Mm. And I don't know if that's all one necklace. I kind of hope it's not. <laughs> because whoever's going to wear that better have a really long neck, a really long body, be really, really tall, and be very, very strong because you're going to be hurting for certain. It's too heavy. Maybe a celebrity. <laughs> or like if you're going to wear it to Academy Awards or something, yeah. you have it on long enough to get your picture taken and then take it off. <laughs> for me, for me, this is enough. I agree. And I would wear that, but I wouldn't wear that with this too. So I think it's, it's you know, it depends on what look you're going for and your body shape and your boldness quotient and all that kind of thing. But... Be fun. Would it be fun to make? Oh, yeah, baby. This would be really fun to make. Would you be collecting up stuff for a long time? Because this, have, this has a theme. She's used a lot of Art Deco pieces in here. She's used a lot of 50s Deco. She's got cream pearls. She's got gray pearls. You know, you're not just going to go get any old kind of rhinestone jewelry and start making something like this. You have to think about it hard. And she has a wonderful eye for what looks right together. So that's something to keep in mind because many of you have a wonderful eye as well, and you can do this too. Okay, I'll sell it to feed my addiction. <laughs> okay, yeah, we sell a lot of things to do that. Blue one's pretty, very organic. I love organic looks. Boho, leather piece, yeah, I like that. A biker, yeah, Ellie, maybe a biker person like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is another K. <coughs> she looks like she's taken... I'm getting hoarse already. It's because of my cold. She's taken a very nice big brooch here that has a really cool line 
to it. And she's suspended everything from that. And it seems like the initial comes here, and then she's hung the stuff in the middle there, and then the rest of the chain came from a secondary um, length. And, oh, there's part of it's a bracelet. I see back, this looks like an old Lesnar bracelet. She's got a bracelet on the one side. <coughs> so, and then she's draped it. So this, again, would be one you'd want to make on a mannequin. Okay. Um, here's one that, for me, is very, very showy, but a little more practical, maybe. But the pieces on it, um, they're interesting, but they're too chunky for me to be on a necklace. That's me. I'm not the be-all and say-all. I'm just, for me, um, I prefer to see a little bit smaller pieces on there. But are they interesting? Yes. Will you get attention with that? Yes. Um, will someone buy it in time? In time. you gotta get, you got to break your customers into this look, unless they're already into it. And then if you're looking for people that are already into it, then you need to do an Etsy. And when you start your Etsy, start out with between 25 and 35 pieces and have a lot of them be over the top. And then they'll start talking about you. And they'll start coming and looking in. You have to keep posting more all the time. But you'll start selling them. Okay, so we're back to this one. So I've gone through, I had like, I don't know, 15 pages or something. I, I'm going to print some more for the workshop so we could talk. But I had encouraged everyone, if possible, that's coming to the workshop. And if you guys are coming, some of you guys are coming and you didn't uh, see the message, um, if you can, go to Pinterest and print yourself some pictures out to put in a folder. This is where these are going to go. And then we'll share them around. And we'll get some inspiration because... I'm going to have one made. You're going to see it in about a minute. Um, but that's the only one I'm going to have made. And it might not be your style. You might have something else in mind. So having these pictures is going to be a really good thing. Okay? All right, now, let me see if it's... Oh, it got all lumped up. Oh, I'm going to have to put it back together now. Oh, well, anyway. <laughs> I, I bumped it too much. Anyway, this is what I'm doing. And let me just take the stuff off here. I hope I can keep it in order, though. Because it's all goofed up now. And plus, you're probably going to want to see what I have in mind. I worked on this for several days trying to figure out what did I want and how to get it all, you know, put in the right place and all that stuff. And then I had to glue in a lot of cabs and all kind of things. But anyway, let me get this pulled out so we can put it back together and you can see where I was going with it. <clears throat> All right. So I've got a lot of B soup on 1828 here. Are you surprised? <laughs> but, um, and I'm using the old gingerbread because, you know, I still want to do my uh, Carnivalian line. So this would be kind of like your higher end showstopper piece in that line. But to show you how I began it, I have three layers, triple strand. I'm not sure how long they are. I'll tell you in a minute, though. But I've used the bead and link chain that we carry at the site in antique copper, and I've also used the 3.5 Rolo because it'll be easier to count off when I attach it. And then, I, I, you know, when you do something like this, you have to have, like, a circlet or a big jump or something to attach the three chains to. I mean, if you have one. Um, if you don't, you're going to have to find the right jump, or you may have to use wire and make it fancy somehow to have wire. What's that? Oh, he's bringing, I have one. <laughs> Jordan's bringing me a coffee. Well, I guess I've got two now. Anyway, um, so I, I used my little hands because they were perfect for the ring, to use for the ring, as you can <laughs> see. Now, you might say, well, why are you showing us that, Brenda? You don't have gingerbread anymore. Well, I have it in rusted iron. Do you have it in old silver? I have it in old silver, and I, I think I have this in gold. If I don't, I will soon. And then the ones we sent off to the player to be made aqua green are going to be back real soon. So, you know, you'll have that. But I wanted to continue my line, so I took the rest of the gingerbread that I didn't send off, and I kept it. Now, some of it I am going to take and send, uh, put it at Etsy before too long. So you'll still be able to get a little bit. But uh, it's the end of... That's the end of gingerbread pewter. We had too many problems with it. Um, to replace it, though, just to mention, we're going to have gingerbread brass, and my first samples came in, and they're lovely. 
you know what? Should we show them? You've got we got a flat of gingerbread brass out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was sitting in the window and then somebody moved it and then I have a little one underneath the light boxes over by Shelly on the opposite wall. Okay. So anyway, so let's measure these so you can see what you're gonna do. All righty. See if I can get a good measure. I should have measured this before I put it on. I just eyeballed it. That's the way I am with these things. I eyeball them. Okay, so here's 12 inches. Now, let's say it's it's um, about 20 inches long, that one. Yeah, we'll just wait with that for a minute, and I'll show them. Um, and then, so it's about 20 inches for the longest one, if you want to make it like mine. Now, maybe you want to make yours different or longer, but if you want to make a triple strand, this is 12. For all intents and purposes, this is 16 inches. The second one is 16. And the last one is about 12. So obviously, this is not going to hang tight around the neck. It's not going to be like... Choker. <laughs> a cho well, yeah. You know, like you might look at these, you might say, oh, wouldn't that be cool just to put your clasp on that? It would be. But in that case, you would have to make the chains longer because this would be too tight. You know, you can't, well, I don't know anybody who would be comfortable with 12 inches or something around their neck, but maybe you know somebody. So what I'm intending to do is, when I get my stuff all on here, is I'm going to take some, you know, gypsy beaded chain, and I'm going to put it around the back. I'm not going to eat too much. I think maybe uh, three, four inches on each side, and I'll be good. And then a clasp, a sturdy clasp. So what I'm going to... Excuse me, what I think I'm going to do, because I haven't done it yet, let me get, first of all, you got to get it, once you get it hooked up, you got to get it to lay straight. Because I'm going to work on this one in front of me, and then once I get some stuff on, I'll take it out and put it on my lady and see how it's going. But I'll pull this up here so you guys can see it. <coughs> so what I thought I would do is I'm going to be pretty simple with the inner layer. I'm not going to put a lot of stuff on it. Now, when you guys make these, you can hang it full, you can hang in every every hole on the roller chain. I've made ones like that myself. Usually when I do that, I, I stay single strand, but hey, sky's the limit. It's your necklace. You can do what you want. I'm going to put this in here, but I can't hang it right here because then it's going to infringe on the next layer. So what I'm going to do, since I can adjust how much uh, stuff I'm going to put around my neck for the length, I'm going to cut it probably about there and hang it about there, maybe, maybe a little longer. So then I'll just have to adjust up at the top. <coughs> and then for my second layer, I'll pull this out. That makes me mad that I got that goofed up. Oh well. So in the middle, I want to put this one in so far as it's not going to hang on to, I just you can, though. It can overlap a little bit. If you look at Kay Adams' and stuff, you'll see where it does, and other people's, too. I just prefer it not to. So if it's, if it's hanging over too much, I might cut the chain a little bit, which you can do that. So then what I was going to do is I was going to hang... Let's see, I was going to do... I think this was my plan. I'm not sure. Yeah, this will hang over a little bit, but might be okay. No, these are going to go up, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Okay, I was going to put these little ones here, sort of like that. I'll have to measure it off. And then I was going to do these sunflower beads, and then <coughs> I was going to do I don't know if I was doing another row of those. I don't think so. I was going to do that, and then I was going to do the, the hands, not that one. Because when you hang this up higher, then you don't have to worry about it dripping down and getting onto something else. So you put it, the lower you put it, the more chance you're going to have of it hanging onto your next length. 
And if you don't like that look, then that's one way to solve it is hang it up a little bit higher on your piece. Okay, so probably going to be something like this. Then at the bottom, my center piece is going to be this. I hope I get this in the picture. It's going to be this watch key part with the Millie Fiori beads. And I'm going to attach it with this hanger. And it will hang like this. And then I'm going to do these. Make sure I don't have, I have them upside down. These. And then two of these. Two. Of, I love these. Have you guys discovered these yet? They're like these little domes, like a watch fob, and you put a 14 by 10 stone in them. We have them in gold and silver as well right now. So I'm going to put these, and then I have two more of them. So depending on how it looks, this might be too chunky. I might put them up here, but I will probably end up putting them on the bottom ones. Do you have any beads? Yeah, but I'm 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 trying to be careful. Yeah, I will do like this. Oh, you're putting. Um, I I these what I'm doing here because you're saying yeah. Javi says, don't you have more beads to put with it? Yeah, I do. Um, <coughs> right now I'm making my framework for the piece, okay. and then I'll see how much stuff I want on it as I go. Um, these are like all focal points, and then you have to work around them. Okay. So I'll use things like uh, my little flower beads here, maybe. Just like I do on my charm bracelets. Let them in some little here and here. And then I'm going to need some delicate beads. I'm going to need to wrap. I wrapped beads for so long yesterday, but <coughs> I need some short ones that don't hang down so much and aren't quite as chunky. I have to add little ones in here someplace. But see, I'll just put those all around in there because I have quite a few. And then I'll just keep doing all the layers. Now, it depends on how far down this comes. Whenever I, you know, get it this far, I'll take a look at it and I'll decide how far up I want to go. <coughs> I know myself, I'm not going to go all the way around. At least I sincerely doubt it. But you can, if you want to. It's up to you. I'm probably going to end up going about to here, maybe. And I'm not putting anything else on this one. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think I will. I'll probably go to about here. If I do anything beyond that, it's probably going to be real small beads going up and kind of just do my bigger stuff at the bottom and then kind of trail up and not have it be quite so big till I get to the top. And I might use um, these beads just to make like little, this is going to take time though, just put one bead on a head pin and turn it just to hang them in there, you know. I used to buy these made like that, but they just got too expensive. But then when you think your time, eh, time's money too. But I've got Oh my goodness, I've got all kinds of hot little charms in here that I could put in this composition. I've got um, ones like that and ones like that. And I've got ones like this. And where's that other one? In here. I don't know if I'll use the yellow or not. I've got this, I've got this, I've got all kinds of them that I can put along the way to fill in wherever I need to. So you can see how it goes. And I'll just keep going until I think I'm done because there's nobody to tell me I'm done or not. It'll be up to me. And it's the same way it'll be when you make yours. It'll be up to you. <coughs> okay, let me go back and see what people are saying. Love the red, Ellie says. I do too. I'm hard-pressed to have a favorite color, but I would have to say probably red's my favorite color. I love it. Lynn thinks it's going to be a center. Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate that. 
Christy says kitchen sink style is her. That's great. I'd love to meet you sometime, Christy, and see you wearing one. That would be absolutely awesome. I think that's great. Luann says happy Mother's Day. Deborah Long says it's going to be beautiful. Thank you, Deborah. Ophine says hello from Florida. Hello back. Thank you for joining us. Um, nice necklace, very pretty, love the colors. Will our chain stay help when we make this? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> if you were going to do, um, say you wanted to do lengths the size of a charm bracelet, because you're going to make it all convertible, then it would, you could use that. But normally, you just lay it out, a beadboard might be better. You just lay it all out and start hanging stuff on it. And when you think it's starting to look good, you pull it up. Pull it up and see how it lays. You know, just pick it up. And then you'll eventually need to go look at it. And see how it is until you finish it. I wonder how many of us will finish our necklace that day. If you know what you're going to do color-wise and what you're going to do, you know, if you need to wire beads up or something, you know, you probably want to do them now before you get there like I did. Um, but they take time. You're going to be surprised how long they take. Even if you make them all the time, they take time, you know. So, um, yeah, I would say more of a help would be a bead board or if you had one of my mannequins that I have. I'm going to try to remember um, to bring it. I remember when I bought it, it was not very expensive, but the company I bought it from insisted on sending it overnight for some inexplicable reason. And I paid a ridiculous amount of shipping for it. I don't know what that was about, but anyway, I wanted it, so it was worth it to me. But anyway, it's a, it's a good thing to have. <coughs> Chris thinks it looks amazing. Well, Chris likes my beads. I happen to know that. Um... I am human. Thanks for joining us. I'm human too. <laughs> I'm only human. Let's see. Master's Touch Salon looks great. Love this. It's my thing. Franny, I made it. Yeah, that's you, Franny. You made it. Yeah, this was your idea and you called me yesterday and told me to do it, right? <laughs> You're a pistol. <laughs> I love you, Fran. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anybody have any questions <coughs> before I totally lose my voice? <laughs> Because this is going to happen. This is where I'm going with it, guys. When it's done, you get to see it. How's that? And then they're probably going to hang here. You know what? This one will probably go in my book. Because I have so much um, 1928 stuff on it, I could do that. And actually, I need a few over-the-top pieces for that book. It doesn't have enough of them. So let's see, somebody said, Christy says, I've only done about six kitchen sink necklaces. You kind of need to walk away from it and come back in emergency time. I would say you're right. Unless you've got a deadline. And then it's a pain. <laughs> I've got a deadline. But, you know, it's okay because I've been doing it. I've done what you said, um, Christy. I've done a little bit and I've come back. And it's really nice if you can hang it to do it, too. So anybody that has a mannequin or can get hold of one, or get one like mine that I'm going to show you. Um, that would be a good thing to do. Okay, I'm going to show you something else. <clears throat> now, I mentioned to you, I kind of hesitate to show you this because then everybody's going to wait their orders and stuff till we get it up, and I'm not going to have this up for a while. There is no way on this earth I can get this up. This week is blown already. I mean, I'm going to be around. We're going to get your order shipped out. And it's, it's, everything's going to be fine, just like always. Um, but that's going to be all we can do. We're not going to be able to put stuff on the site, probably not until the middle of the following week after that. But I'm going to show you how this goes when we get stuff. I know some of you have seen it. You want to hand me? Oh, yeah. Okay. And I don't, you know, you might think, oh, that looks like an awful lot of stuff, but it's really not. It's just only about 20 styles here. <coughs> okay. This is my first... I had a sample shipment where I got the little filigree tubes on the earrings, if you saw them on um, Facebook this morning. Um, I only got like 12 each of those, so I have absolutely none to sell. But I will have more soon. But um, when we get these, as you can see, 
they're all mixed up, so we have to go through and separate. So I'm going to look for these. There's, this is what everybody gets to do. There's nobody here that gets out of counting. This is our new gingerbread finish. It's pretty beautiful, and it's really pretty close. Here's see, she just picked up a piece of the old. Um, can you see it? Yeah. Whoops! Now it's lost. <laughs> okay, you see that toggle thing? Well, it blends so quickly. It, it's it. the same color. And if you want to make this darker and older looking, all you do is you take. Um, you might distress it a little bit, and then you take a little brown paint and go over it. Sepia brown would be good. Or what's that other color? Oh, it escapes me. Sienna or something, I think it's called. That would be a good one. Um, and you just put over that. But yeah, instead of having the pewter, we're going to have brass. So you're not out entirely. You're going to have your old familiar pieces in this color. So we have these, and we have this one, which makes an awesome bracelet, by the way. And we have some roses, which I love this rose. We have some of these bracelet tops you guys like. Um, this one makes an awesome bracelet, too. A lot of you guys know that. Um, I think it goes this way when you do that, yeah. Um, this one, this one we use a lot. I'll just put it on my skin and show you. This is my color, by the way, can't you tell? Um, I got a mount. There's really not that many styles. It's a mount. Good stuff. Yeah, cinnamon. It's a good color. It's in good name. I call it gingerbread because it's all, what I've always called this color. Way back when I first found my first vintage French pieces out of the old warehouses. It was this color. And it inspired me and I said, hey, I want to do that finish. And so it took a while to get that accomplished. I had to find the right guy to do it. And we did it first for the pewter. And then I, you know, I had the rose ox color, so I didn't want to do it then because it's like we already got a copper color, you know. But now I'm thinking maybe this will be better than the rose ox. The rose ox is a little bit shinier, and this has just got, he got a little bit of lacquer on this this time, and I wish he had. And the next time he does this, I'm going to tell him don't do that. I want it to be kind of matte, but it'll all blend. Here's a centerpiece for Pete's necklace. I got these bead caps here. You guys seem to like these bead caps. So I got some of them. I got a few little blanks in here to try. They didn't come out so good. Uh, something flat. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> something flat <coughs> will not come out um, real good and even in this finish. It'll streak up. I kind of like the look of it. I don't know if you guys will, but I like it when it's streaked up. And this looks more organic to me. But, um... The better pieces to do in this finish would be a piece like this that has a lot of high and low going on, like this. So anyway, we have this and we have some other things too that we got for samples that we will put up, but I would say two, two and a half weeks because this is an all we got coming in. We got the aqua copper uh, BSM 1928 coming in. We have more beads coming in, which take time. Um, we have more memory wire coming in. I don't know, I just got a bunch of pending stuff, you know, that's coming, so we're going to be working like 60 to get this done. But this is just a preview, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do, since I can't sell it to you now. Right now, we have the gift with purchase, I can't remember, was it 60 bucks? Yes. Um, we were giving you a little organza bag with what we were calling a gingerbread souvenir. And it was a piece of the old gingerbread, along with a few little beads, just for fun. And um, if you order tonight, and I think I'll probably do this all next week, too. <coughs> if you have, uh, might have to be a $75 order because the brass is, is not cheap. If you do 75 or up this coming week. I'm going to give you a piece of this stuff. I'm not saying I'm giving you this piece, but I'm going to give you a piece of this stuff. A piece of it, because it takes a while to get it made again, so I can't deplete this whole box and give it to you. But I'm going to give you a little piece of this stuff so you can have it to kind of dream on and play with. And 
few other little things maybe anyway it'll be fine if you do $75 I'll have it figured out till tomorrow morning but if you order tonight you'll get all the stuff that I promised you last week and if you go 75 up I'll give you this too so you guys that know about it can double dip if you want and oh by the way we had some more of those wondrous beads come in those rosebud beads and Javi and Shelly managed to get most of them up. They're not all up yet, but there's a lot of them up. And this one is so awesome. I can't decide whether I want to put this in my necklace. Now, let's look. Let's see. Maybe I do. Because this is my strand. That's all I get. Just one strand. That's all. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know. This might be too flashy for this. Too flashy? You think? What do you guys think? I like to put like one bead. And let me clip it. Let's do it together. What time is it? Yeah, we got a few minutes. Yeah. Time to show. All right. So let's see. If I took this, this is what it looks like on a headband. And I don't add anything else to it. Just leave it alone. Do, do like it is. Okay. Take my round nose pliers and try something here. My coffee's getting cold. <laughs> I always tell you guys, don't eat while you're making jewelry. That's when you're using E6000. When you got pliers and stuff and you're not using glue, have all the coffee you want. You can eat away. Yeah, if you want to. Chris, if you do that every day, sit and eat all day while you make jewelry all day, oh, you're going to have... Uh, going to have a situation like I have going on. I gained 10 pounds over the last years, year or so. If you look at my videos, you certainly can tell. Now I'm working hard to get it off. I've sworn off chips. No chips. No Tootsie Rolls. Done. So I keep saying, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to get any heavier because what it does is it makes everything hurt on me because I'm, I'm short. I'm not a yeah, big person. I, my, I do. I have problems with my, my knees knee. already. My knees will hurt. My neck hurts. My core hurts because I <clears throat> don't have much to, um, you know, I can't do like core building exercises because I have hernias that can't be repaired, sadly. So I have to be real careful there. So, yeah, eat celery if you're going to sit around all day. <laughs> so, Annie says, I'll take a box full. I bet you would, wouldn't you, Fran? Yes, you would. Okay, what do you guys think? Maybe, maybe I should put it in the middle where you can see. Is this going to go? Maybe it goes with the flash of the rondelles that I put on it, huh? What do you think? Think it goes? Should I do it? Should I make some more and put on there? I don't know. Can yeah, you see them good enough? How do you make real rose, bud, rose beads? Oh, you mean like from the dried ones? If you're going to do that, you have to dip them in resin a couple times and let them cure. And then you have to poke a hole through them vertically. But these are, the, these are checked glass, so I can't make these. Red looks good with the gingerbread. Yes, I agree, Maureen. Hi, everyone. Sorry I'm late. My sons took me out. Oh, don't worry. You know what? If you guys can't make it, you know that YouTube archives these, so you can always come back. And, you know, there's a lot of information in this one, so you might want to do that anyway. You know, just something to refer to. Let me take a sip. I heard, I've seen a question on here that how much would you price a kitchen sink? Or next? Oh, well, we were having a conversation. I think it was about your bracelet, wasn't it, Maureen? Maureen has a craft show next weekend. <laughs> and Karen says she likes the other red beads better. I kind of do too. But I might have to put just a little bit in it just because. I don't know. We'll see. Um, anyway, getting back. I got distracted. Maureen, we're talking about these. Um, she's been making the spiral wrap necklace, uh, bracelets, the memory wire bracelets oh. for her show. She said she made, what would you say, Maureen, 25 or 26 of them you made already? She's used um, a lot of repurposed beads, which are really funky and cool. And she has some other beads that she does. That I think they're beaded. Maybe she beads them. <coughs> there you go, Marvin. So she didn't know how to price. We talked about that. I said, well, 
What you got to do is you got to figure out how much time it's going to take you to make this. And sometimes you don't know till you're done. I would say minimally you want to charge $15 an hour for your time because in California that's only minimum wage, isn't it? It's not like, you know, $15 an hour was 10 years ago or 15. I mean, it's not big money anymore, but you got to get at least that, guys, for your time. <coughs> you know what, Javi, go get me my calculator. We'll run this up. We'll figure this out. So, but I say, you know, if you can get 20 or 25, like on a simple piece, it doesn't take too long, go 20. You know, get a little bit more on those. You, you have to jiggle it. There's no one set thing. So let's say um, I have six hours in this. I might because I had to wrap all those beads. And, I, you know, I'm figuring it out as I go along, too. Like Chrissy says, you kind of have to go back and forth with it. So I'm going to have some time. I'm going to call it six hours. For me... Because I have to do so much, and because I teach this stuff, and because I've been making these for years, I don't want to get $15 for this. I hope that doesn't sound bad. But um, when I make jewelry, I would like to be paid for the effort. So I would say I would want $25 an hour to do this. If somebody hired me to do it, I'll definitely want that. So let's see, we got 120, well, we've got um, six hours at what did we say, 25? We got 150 bucks already in there. And that doesn't even count parts. Now, you guys know the Millie Fiori is expensive. This chain's not so terribly expensive as what I have in it. Mm. I probably have like $12 in chain here at retail. You always go figure the, the, go figure the cost of your parts at retail. I should be doing this separately because we're going to multiply it then. So parts, parts at retail. The Millie Fiori cab, I don't know what I charge for those. I think six bucks. Or so. I'm going to call it six because I can't remember. Um, these little flowers were like a dollar using your discount. So if I use 20 of them, there's 20. Um, these are expensive. They're $4 at retail because it, it takes so much time to make these. You should see what they have to do to make this. So I have one, two, three, four. I think I had two more over there I was going to put on two. Let's just call it six of them. So there's 24 bucks. And then I've got one, two, three, four of the 14 by tens and I think those are going to be I think they're going to be around three a piece I'm not sure because I haven't costed them out yet so let's just take another 12 bucks and then I've got these little 10 by 8s I've got a bunch of them there let's just say there's 15 then um, we have all these little beads but I haven't used that many and none of them are expensive I've got some rhinestone rondelles so that's a little bit more I got a Few of these little beadell beads these cost a buck a piece so let's just say I've got thirty dollars in beads just off the top of my head okay and then we've got these two hands here I'm gonna call that I think it was seven bucks and then we need a clasp I'm just gonna charge for a heavy heavy lobster do you know how much I have in this were you counting with me anybody know what I have in this want to guess Oh, I can't stand it. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I count $127 at retail in everything that's on here. So I've got $127 plus I've got $150. Wait a minute. Nope. I don't do that yet. Okay. So $127 at retail. Normally, I tell you to do three times the cost of the parts in retail. $381. You might have to jiggle that. You might have to go two times. So let's try. 127 times. Because, you know, people have their limit. If it's a commission piece, it's different. Usually that person comes to you and they know they're going to pay. Charge them 800 bucks. It'll be worth it. They'll probably pay it, too. 
Okay, so let's just say you just doubled it, 254 plus 150, $400. $400 till I get done with this. I won't charge that much. If somebody wanted it real bad, I'd probably let them have it for 200 because I didn't really make it to sell per se. I made it to teach you, and also I need, I need an over-the-top over piece for my book, for my from 1928 section that Mel's letting me have in the book. So, you know, I'm good with it. If somebody wanted to buy it after it's been in the book, because it will be a book piece, it would be after it's been in the book. It'll definitely be worth $400, but <coughs> I might let it go for $200. We'll have to see. It's not even made yet, so why count my chickens before I hatch? Okay. Put the rose petals in a cast iron pile. Oh, we're talking about the... Well, right now we're going to talk about these Millefiori sinkers, okay? We'll talk, you know, we can talk about doing the rose petal jewelry another time. But anyway, your, your way sounds good. Um, I learned to do them when I took class from Susan Leonard, Susan Leonard Kasmer on resin. We did them in class. Okay, yes, they're definitely a lot of time. You're worth it. Thank you, Christy. Sometimes I think maybe nobody makes them worth that, but that's okay. I don't know. I'm the teacher. I'm teaching you how to do it. I did the work. You know, I've been doing this for 30 years. I have my name. So maybe, yeah. So she, she says, what? <laughs> yeah, $400 minimally. It probably should be 800 But you got to be practical, and that's what I tell you. Here's what I would do. If you want to do a bunch of these and you want to sell them and you want people to buy them, go to Etsy and find out what they're getting for them. And then you'll kind of have a good baseline as to what is practical. Now, I haven't looked for a while, but the way I understood it, if I'm correct, was the way Kay Adams did. If she charged $250 to make it, and then you had to send her the chotch to go on it. So you had to collect it up. <coughs> so you would like commission her to do the, the work. And then she would put it all on there and then she would decide whatever else she had to put in it that was hers and you know a little bit more to even it out and that's what you'd have to pay her. But you paid her two fifty up front. Now you think about that. Um, that's at twenty five dollars an hour, which I don't know if that's what she goes by, but that's two fifty. It means 10 hours she's figuring on to do it. She probably is a lot faster than that. But for me, um, so she would be getting like $100 more than I would ask because people have a limit and I'm not Kay Adams. <coughs> it goes a lot by your name, you know. A lot of times people will think, well, my work is just as good as theirs and I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to charge what they do. Have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> people, you know, you know just how it was back in the day. You had the, that Calvin Klein sticker on the back of your jeans, you know, and everybody thought you were cool. That's a long time ago, but you know, it, or your Coach bag, or your um, now what are the other bags that are really hot? There's a bunch of them. Prada bag or uh, um, Louis Vuitton. You know, one of those big hot bags. You know. You pay for that. You know, I've had coach bags, and I took a look at, look at them inside, and I'm like, why is this better than the others? Just marginally. It's the name. If you have a name, you can ask what you want to ask for it. I have a little name. Maybe it'll be a little bigger after the book comes out. But that's not why I'm here anyway. I don't care about that. But I'm just saying, I can't charge with somebody who's well, well known for making these does. I get it. Not count on getting it. I mean, maybe you will. Who's to say? But it's not likely. It's not likely. Do people pay that for pieces like this? Um, yeah. If they don't, you can't make them if you want to sell them. But you may not have the right clientele for this. I would not make a bunch of these and take them out to uh, a tabletop show somewhere or an outside uh, craft fair. I think you're going to sell them, unless you're in a really upscale area. This would be like a gallery piece or something for a fine arts show. Yeah. 
in the right area. You're not going to, you know, and even so, if you do it at Etsy, you're going to have to have blue perfect photos. You're going to need to have all the photos that let you load. You're going to have to have a description that beats all descriptions. I mean, you're going to have to work very, very hard at sell selling this. But at the same time, that will build your name so that you can make more of them. I tell people in my bulk class, for those of you who've taken it, you know this already, I have my pyramid of sales. At the top of that pyramid is pieces like this. And you don't make many of them because it takes time to sell them. But they're important to have uh, when you do shows because they are like your window dressing. This would be the kind of piece that a boutique would put in the window to get people to come in. I used to do those lunchbox purses. Any of you guys ever seen them or do them? You get all the chotch and repurpose stuff and you put it on an old dome top lunch purse. Like that what? one? No, no, that's not, that's not. It's a dome, it's one of those old, um, I used to look for them at yard sales. They have the old black um, metal dome top lunch boxes that they used to take into the mine or <laughs> something to work oh, to the factory. You know, dad would take it. Okay. <clears throat> and I'd spray paint them. And then I'd sand them and rough them up, and I completely, utterly covered them with chodge. And I used to get two fifty for one of those, and they always went in the window at shops. That's what they did with them. So I got to be a little bit known around this area for those. But um, you know, when you think about it, if you can make pieces that take you fifteen minutes, like a pair of earrings, that's made out of really nice parts and get 25 to 30 dollars for them. You could work for a few hours, use just a few parts, and make $400 and not have to bang your head putting this together. So that's something to think about. So just because you might get $400 doesn't mean, oh, go jump in with two feet and say, that's what I'm gonna do for my money because there's, there's a lot to be considered. You do this kind of per piece for a challenge because you like it or because you have a reason to make it. A commission, uh, you need a showstopper, I need, a, I need something for my book. That's going to you know, work out for me. It's just fun. So, But if you want to think about the hard brass tacks, that's how it is. You know, so anyway. Well, honestly, 35 to 40 is your real worth, I think. But the thing is, Christy, and you know this. Teaching designers don't get their real worth until, I don't know, I think I'm worth it too. But I won't get it. And, and I like to teach people, you know, not everybody can pay that kind of money. You know, they're, they're paying a lot of money to come to this workshop. I'm very honored by that. Is it paying $285 to come to three days? And then all the money to get here, like, Erica coming from UK, you know, and then they got to get a room when they get over here. A lot of them are, are doubling up, but still, you know, I'm very honored by that. But, you know, I have to be practical. You know, I want people to enjoy what they do with our parts and what they do with me. And if you get too expensive, it's like, well, huh, look what I can do and you guys can't do. Or like, oh, you... I'll show you, but you can never afford it. I'm, I don't know. I've just seen teachers out there who have a name, and they go for it, and I'm not saying it's not worth it, but there's just a cutoff point where you, it's too much. You know what I'm saying? So you, you have to make pieces like this for the love. That's what I think. Let's see. Artists really undervalue themselves. Yeah, they do, but I, be, I believe in being practical. I don't really undervalue myself. I just am thinking, do I want to sell it or not? And how fast do I need to sell it? So, so long as I'm not in the hole and I'm making money on it, enough money that I think it was worth it, I'll do it. If somebody doesn't want to give me a decent price for it, then I won't sell it. I'll keep it. But you do have to you do have to charge enough, and they might be thinking, "Oh, I could never charge fifteen dollars an hour. I could never charge twenty. Isn't that well? If you're doing it for money, you have to do it. But think of it this way: <coughs> if you're making earrings that take you 10, 15 minutes, 
then it's just a portion of that hour. So they're not paying so much for it. You can just make so much more money doing smaller pieces, and that's the truth. But you got to do something for your heart, and that's what artists really need. they got to do stuff for their heart, and that's why you want to do stuff like this. Let's see what people are saying now. Um, the name is getting bigger. We'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm jaded. I've been around a long time, and I've just never gotten to be much of a name, and that's okay because I'm not doing it for that reason. But I just faded away, so I don't know where you're at. I can't read anything you're saying. Listen, I have to look at hobbies. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It is what it is. Um, I have small pieces and larger ones from a from a low price to a higher one. That way, something for everyone. I hope that's the way you should do it. What's your name, I am human? That's not your name. <laughs> What's your name, honey? Tell us. Cassandra, you're, you're never too late here. You're never too late because you can always go back and watch again. So there you go. My husband, internationally known player with 50 years experience, he sounds just like you because he's practical. I know that, Christy. And he's practical. He, I don't know your husband, but I would imagine he's a man who enjoys teaching. And he loves to see people prosper by what he teaches. And he knows they can only pay so much. I mean, I've known teachers who have a name. They want $800 for a class. Well, that's great if you can get it. But the thing is, most people don't have that kind of money. They can't do it. So all they can do is wish. You know, I just, I don't know. I just feel like throw it out there, it'll come back to you some way. Somehow my bills get paid and I'm okay. So I won't be rich. <laughs> okay, when I don't sell on the art fair, I sell on eBay. That's great. It's always a battle between pricing his work because he undercharges, but he has your same giving spirit for teaching and humbleness, and that's beautiful. Well, it's partly that too, and partly because he probably, I always say, <laughs> don't, I always say, this place ain't no museum. It's like, you know, you know I, I want a fair price for something, but I don't want to put it like way to the top um, and then never get it, you know, unless I don't care about selling it. If I don't care about selling it, then I'll keep it until I get whatever for it, you know, but usually I'll sell it. Okay, Naomi K. Thank you, Naomi, for telling me. Is Hi, Naomi human. <laughs> Uh, that's, I love to see you guys talking to each other. Well, you know what? Um, we've been on here now for, let's see, an hour and, a, uh, hour and 15 minutes. We've wow. been on here for a while. But I kind of got off uh, track because we got into the business of things. But I'm, I'm practical that way, too. I want to see it do well. <coughs> Sometimes you find out that, um, you know, you can do a few pieces like this for your heart because you love it. But um, you got to do those smaller pieces that are clever and are a better use of your time and money so that you can keep making. Or else you'll just be depressed when you go to shows or at, you'll be depressed with your eBay and Etsy sales and, and it just won't go as well for you. And that's sad. You know? So you have to learn to be practical and you have to learn about your market. You know, maybe. Maybe you take this piece to fine art, you know, save pieces like this for a fine art show that you're going to do, and then instead of me putting like 250 on this, I'll put 350, or maybe I'll put the 400, 395 on it because this is the kind of piece that belongs at a place like that, and the clientele that come there expect to pay for things and they respect handcraft. But if you're doing a farmers market or a country festival or something. Folks don't have that kind of money. That kind of customer is probably not going to be there. And they're just going to look at it and say, are you kidding? And a lot of people just don't get it. Like if you do one that is a lot of uh, chotch, a lot of flea market bags, and you make it work, um, they're just going to see flea market church, chotch all hooked together. That's what they'll see because they're not an artist. So you're going to have to be able to endure hearing all day. What are you talking about? That's just a bunch of junk attached to a chain. And you have to hear that all day. And if your other sales that day are not great, you're going to go home feeling really crappy because we've all done it. So you can prevent that. By, yeah, go ahead and do this, but make a lot of practical things to take as well. Okay, let's see where we're at. <clears throat> 
Thank you, Naomi. I appreciate that. Yes, people do do them as art. That's for sure. Well, listen, has everybody got their name on here? Because you know you win a prize. We got 42 today. I think it's because it's a holiday. <coughs> we have more than that. But I appreciate all 42 of you. I'm so thankful that you came. I know I was busy doing my thing, and I miss saying hi to a lot of you. But thank you so much for coming. And for those of you who are new to us, because I see some, um, we do a drawing every week. We have these every week at 4.30 on Sunday, 4.30 EST. And I put all the names, each comment, each person that comments, not each comment, but each person that comments once or three times or ten times, doesn't matter. You get caught, counted once and then I count you all up and then I use the random number generator and whoever gets it, gets it. And I will call out whoever won in the description of this video and also at the creative group at Facebook, which by the way, if you don't know about it, it's Bisu Boutique's creative group. It's a Facebook. We have about 5,600 members. A lot of the girls here today with us are members of that group, but you're warmly invited to join us and I hope you will. So, okay, get your name on here. We'll see if you win. You might win today. And remember, next week we can't get together like this, but It'll probably still be fun. We'll have maybe short five-minute videos and, and Javi or, or Lauren or Diane will do them, whoever. And they'll just kind of show you what's going on. Maybe interview some of the students that are there. Or they'll video me teaching live for a little bit or whatever. But yeah, Sunday we're doing these. So you can get to see maybe what some other people are coming up with. But we won't meet here next Sunday. The, the Sunday after that. We'll be back, okay? I'll remind you. Don't worry. I'll remind you. So, you got... Oh, Lily Bird says she loves my channel. Thank you. Oh, there's Barb. She just got home. Well, I'm glad you came, Barb. Thanks for showing up. That's great. You can go back and look at it later. It's going to be here. So, everybody, have a great time today. Um, I'm going to get back to work because i got a ton of things to do to get ready. Yes, Julie, we'll see you next weekend. That's for sure. And um, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. So, yay. Great session today. We talked about so many good things, didn't we? Come back, okay? And don't forget, for those that are new, this stuff comes from bsuboutiques.com. That's my, son, that's my family supply site. It's a, it's a family-run business. My son Jordan's my partner. Javi is my niece. Hello. And, um, <laughs> Her husband, Rob, is my nephew, and he's around sometimes, too. He was around a lot in the beginning. Um, Shelly works here, and Diane and Lauren. Diane is Lauren's mom. So we're all family, literally. <coughs> and we work together just to have some income, you know, and it works out. And we're just grateful to meet all of you guys. And so if you need stuff, Come check us out at bsuboutiques.com where we have the good stuff because we are loading new stuff all the time. And not next week. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. All righty. Thank you so much for coming. We will see you in two weeks this time. Okay? All right. Two. <laughs> that's not the peace sign. That's two weeks. <laughs> two. Oh, here. Here's the camera. I got it. I'm over there because I'm looking on her, her iPad because mine died. Here, there's two. And that's not rabbit ears or the peace sign. That's two. Two. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Woo. Two weeks. All right. See you guys. Love you. Bye. Bye.